Welcome to Team Girl Squad! I've carefully set aside this time for checking my email. Dear Strongman, how do you type with boxing gloves on? Mike Bandoregan. Oh, that's a new one. No way do I get this freaking question all the time. I suppose I'll probably answer it right now. Delete it! <laughs> We're going back today. Way back. To the before time. Back to the wild west of the internet that predates YouTube itself. For those of you who might not remember too well, before YouTube, the platform of online video was ruled by Flash animations. And while you had your ever-growing communities like Newgrounds, one series sat at the top of this early internet mountain alongside its own creations like Teen Girl Squad and Trogdor. I'm of course talking about HomestarRunner.net. It's dot com. Got but let's be real, everyone was actually there for the narcissistic wrestle man, Strong Bad. And if you know anything about Strong Bad emails, or you, I don't know, read the title of this video, then you know where this episode is going. I'm Jacob with Channel Frederator, and today we're going to be doing some online archaeology to try to come up with an acceptable answer for one of the oldest unanswered questions on the internet. How does Strong Bad type with boxing gloves on? If you're not familiar with HomestarRunner.com, you should go check it out because its cultural impacts can't be understated. Speemail58 is a treasure that the MCU wishes it could recreate the magic of. For the record, Speemail58 is the one where Strong Bad draws Trogdor for the first time and we got that amazing song. But yeah, in short, this is the site. This guy is one of the main stars. He wears these on his hands all the time and he does this in almost every video he's featured in. The mainstay of the entire website was Strong Bad Emails, a series where fans would send Strong Bad emails and then he would make fun of their grammar and punctuation. I mean, answer them. So typing is a thing that he does pretty often. And the amount of times fans would write in asking Strong Bad how he types with boxing gloves on would of course become a running gag that's persisted up to today, almost 20 years after the site was first launched. Wow, I have not felt older in my entire life than I do right now, and each day is just a grim reminder of how we can't stop the forward march of time. And it's worth mentioning that this question was never really meant to be answered. The creators of the site, Matt and Mike Chapman, have been notoriously tight-lipped about this whole situation. I mean, nobody makes more jokes about this than themselves. And before we get really into it, I'm sure that with enough practice, it's possible that you could learn how to type with boxing gloves on. With a light touch of a dainty butterfly, because otherwise you'd just mash the keyboard with every keystroke. But Strong Bad types way too quickly for this to be the case. Also in the email crying, he types a complete sentence with one hand at the same speed as usual. And stuff like this happens all the time, so what is going on? Okay, so this question being one of the internet's oldest mysteries is going to take some patience, so bear with me on this one. After mulling over this question for over a decade of my life, I think I've discovered Strong Bad's deep dark secret. Strong Bad is only able to type with boxing gloves on because he was never actually typing in the first place. I know, I, I know that's a scandalous idea, but consider this. What if Strong Bad is using a speech to text program, answering emails by dictation rather than typing at all? I know that's a loaded claim, but I think we can build a case. You notice how when Strong Bad is typing and we can see what he's typing, he rarely types in silence? 99% of the time, Strong Bad also narrates everything he types. And when he doesn't narrate his typing, why is he usually only ever seen in profile rather than from behind his back? What other reason would he have to narrate every word he types? That's a rhetorical question. I know it's because it's a cartoon and he's also talking to the audience at this point, but this is an idea that's gonna come back later. But wait, Strong Bad is notorious for using technology and computers that are hilariously out of date. Yeah, that's true, but I don't think that's necessarily a theory killer. Strong Bad has had many computers in the past, manufactured by a host of pseudo 80s and 90s tech companies. And for the sake of clarity, they were in order, the Tandy 400, the Compi 386, the Lappy 486, the Compay, and finally, the Lappier. As well as a couple of other gag ones like his work PC, the Corpy NT6. These PCs are likely parodies of various companies, but his first computer was the only one that shared its brand name with a real computer company. Company, though the computer itself wasn't real, the Tandy 400. Tandy actually played a pretty big hand in the fledgling years of the personal computer revolution from the late 70s to the early 80s, releasing a bunch of models. And the Tandy 400 looks like it takes the most from the 1983 and 84 models, the Tandy 2000 and Tandy 1000 respectively. The reason I say this is because Strong Bad's PC looks like it runs on MS-DOS, or some distinct but functionally identical system. And the Tandy line I just mentioned, which had MS-DOS compatibility, was launched 
specifically to compete with newer IBM machines that came outfitted with MS-DOS. This is only aided by the things we see Strongbad's computers are capable of, like running games like Peasant's Quest, a very transparent parody of King's Quest which was playable on DOS machines, including the Tandy 1000 among others. Although granted, Strongbad only ever played Peasant's Quest on his compi and not on his Tandy, but this is the general time period that we're dealing with. With that in mind, it's worth mentioning that the Tandy 1000 SL, which was an updated version of the Tandy 1000, did possess a microphone input, so it's not like capturing audio on personal computers at this time was impossible. And all of Strongbad's computers after the Tandy 400 gradually became more technologically advanced. He even used a mouse for a staggering three emails. And while, yes, speech recognition wasn't really a thing in the 80s, Strongbad emails don't take place in the 80s. It all started in 2001. And the first consumer speech recognition software was released earlier in the 90s, and by the 2000s, it was already pretty decent, basically plateauing up until the rise of smartphones and Siri. Hey Siri, how a strong bad type with boxing gloves on? You're holding an Android phone. Now, Strongbad obviously isn't a tech wizard, but he does have a friend who is much more technologically inclined. The cheat is frequently seen with newer tech, for the time of these cartoons at least, and since he's pretty much Strongbad's IT guy, among other things, he might have devised a way for Strongbad's sad, pathetic Tandy to implement voice recognition software, as well as for all of Strongbad's future PCs. A bit of a stretch, I know. I mean, I'm my mom's IT guy, and I don't know how to mod 35-year-old PCs with software they probably can't run, but the cheat is a smart and capable dude. If if anyone in Free Country USA can do it, it's the cheat. And maybe Bubs. And maybe Pom Pom. But uh, wait, hang on. Where would the mic be? Well, the characters of HomestarRunner.com are very self-aware of their existence as a web cartoon. Characters address the audience directly all the time. Hell, Strong Bad Email's basic concept is a fourth wall break since he answers emails from viewers of the show. And if they're aware of the show as a production, there's bound to be some movie magic happening. Like any reasonable production, the mic is probably somewhere just off screen. After all, what kind of shoddy production would have the host's mic just in plain view of the audience? That would just be silly and frankly, unprofessional. Oh, also, before we move on, there's one last thing I want to point out about Strongbad's typing. Here's an image of Strongbad typing away. Notice anything weird? Like speech recognition, wireless keyboards weren't exactly a thing in the 80s, but unlike speech recognition, wireless keyboards also weren't really a thing in the late 90s or early 2000s. And with the exception of his two laptops, none of Strongbad's keyboards have ever been plugged in to anything. How can the WrestleMan type with boxing gloves when his keyboards don't even connect? to anything. This can even be supported in the earliest Strong Bad emails. In them, a typing sound would still be heard in between sentences, even though Strong Bad isn't saying anything, unlike in later emails where the typing sound would stop when Strong Bad stops. In real life, this is probably because the brothers chaps were still learning how to animate well in Flash, but in universe, this could be explained by Strong Bad's keystrokes not actually doing anything. He's just hammering away at a dead keyboard while using his voice to type out emails. So as it turns out, Strong Bad does not type with boxing gloves on. We've been lied to all of these years. <sighs> okay, you know what? I need to cool off a bit after having discovered this horrible deceit. I need to relax with something. Like the videos on our new anime channel, Get in the Robot. <laughs> that was really dumb, I'm not gonna put that in. We've got a bunch of fun laid back videos over there about shows like My Hero Academia, Sword Art Online, Attack on Titan, and I don't know, maybe Clannad later down the line because my producer told me to watch both series several months ago and then I finally did, so I'll be damned if that doesn't come in useful later, Adrian. But yeah, seriously, once we're done here, if you're a fan of anime, go check out and subscribe to Get in the Robot. And with that, I think I'm ready to get back to Strong Bad. Let me be the first to say that this this is not a perfect idea. There are some gaps, but I'm gonna try to explain them away. Starting with some stuff I haven't mentioned and then we're gonna work our way backwards. Most obviously, and probably the biggest problem with this idea, is that if Strongbad is using speech to text like I mentioned, why is he making a typing motion at all? Other than to maintain the illusion that he's so awesome that he can defy all reasonable expectations and appear to type with boxing gloves on. I mean, for Strongbad, that's kind of reason enough, but let's explore this. My first thought was that this could be muscle memory, since Strongbad spends like 90% of his time in front of computers. Or maybe his typing motions could be connected to a condition that affects muscle movement. I consulted a friend of mine who's a developmental psychologist, and she told me that a likely case might be something like tardive dyskinesia, which is a symptom of antipsychotic 
psychotic medications that can manifest through things like rhythmic movements of the hands and muscle ticks in the face, among these other characteristics. While we don't know if SB is on medication, it would explain his arm movements as well as serve as a possible explanation for why Strong Bad never removes his mask, to hide his facial ticks. Although when it's active, this seems to be a rather persistent condition and probably wouldn't affect Strong Bad selectively, like only when he's sitting at his computer. So your mileage will vary on this explanation. Also to ensure objectivity in my friend's answer, I didn't tell her I was asking about Strong Bad until afterwards, and then she blocked me on Facebook. But that's not where the possibilities end. In the very first Strong Bad email, SB compares taking his mask and boxing gloves off before he goes to bed to someone else taking their face and hands off, unless they were some kind of robot. At first, I thought this might mean that Strong Bad doesn't have hands since he's so freaked out by them in Doomy Tales of the Macabre, but he reveals in the 2016 fan costume commentary that he wears A plus number one all pro panache boxing gloves, implying that they're you know, gloves to go over hands. Instead of jumping to a perfectly reasonable conclusion of Strong Bad not having hands, we've been ignoring a rather massive part of Strong Bad up until this point. He's a wrestler, and not only that, his mask would tell us that he's a Lucha Libre wrestler. And Lucha has a very strong tradition regarding masks, with their removal often being seen as the ultimate insult. And I guess Strong Bad extends that to his gloves as well, because he says that taking his boxing gloves off is just as extreme as taking his mask off. Many luchadors will also uphold this tradition outside of the ring as well, wearing their masks in public much like Strong Bad does. Case in point, the legendary Mexican wrestler El Santo, whose life I can't even begin to summarize here. But among the many things he was known for, one of them was that he wore his iconic silver mask everywhere, only unmasking himself once on television a week before his death. And this was after a decades-long career that changed the face of wrestling forever. And I'm not just saying this for nothing. Not only is Strong Bad's design borrowed from Lucha, his name is a reference to the video game Tag Team Wrestling, and the character himself has a well-documented history of being a professional wrestler, though during the events of Strong Bad emails, he seems to have retired. But what's curious is that Strong Bad hardly ever talks about his time as a wrestler, only going into a ton of detail in the spemail Yes, comma, Wrestling, and that was more about the history of his characters and gimmicks rather than the act of wrestling. Though a younger Strong Bad does show off some signature moves in the spemail Lady Ing, which includes all of the high-risk, high-flying moves that you'd expect from Lucha Libre. Oh, by the way, did I mention that Lucha Libre is incredibly dangerous? Even the most consummate non-Lucha professional wrestlers will find themselves in situations that are horrific and can lead to horrible intended consequences like injury or death. For every Steve Austin that recovers from a broken neck in 1997, there are a dozen other wrestlers who never fully recover from less serious injuries. If you're not a fan of wrestling, trust me when I say that injuries are more than just an occupational hazard for professional wrestlers. They're a very very real possibility that they face in every match. But when you add Lucha into the mix, which depending on where you are might push for a more unhinged hardcore experience compared to the family-friendly image that certain American promotions have been pushing in the last decade, things can get real dangerous real fast. And for a wrestler like Strong Bad, who's pretty well known for getting hurt as part of his misadventures, he very well might have post-traumatic stress disorder brought on by a previous life-threatening injury in his wrestling career. According to a 2012 study, researchers found that focusing on a repetitive trivial task in the case of the study playing Tetris aided in lessening the effects of PTSD and dampening the effects of flashbacks on subjects. Of course, the study doesn't say that this is the cure, but it is a step in helping those with the condition. Could this be the answer to the mystery of Strong Bad's keyboard movements? What if these motions are his coping mechanism to deal with PTSD from trauma he endured in his wrestling career? While Tetris helped those in the study concentrate on things like spatial awareness, Strong Bad could be concentrating on trying to replicate the keystrokes while wearing boxing gloves. This would also allow him to maintain his luchador tradition while upholding the image that he is, in fact, typing with boxing gloves on. But to bring up some other issues, if Strong Bad is using some sort of speech-to-text program, then how can we explain instances where things are typed when Strong Bad isn't talking, or when Strong Bad says something but a different word gets typed? First thoughts were that maybe the program was told to replace certain keywords, like replacing Strong Bad's brother, Strong Sad, as Dumpus. This would also explain why he's able to run his email program without explicitly typing what he says, instead working the word email into a different song every episode. The problem with this idea, though, is that this kind of keyword spotting is relatively new technology compared to everything else we've talked about, and it definitely would not be that sophisticated in the year 2000. And yeah, I know, speech-to-text wouldn't be this sophisticated either, but something's gotta give. But on the other hand, Strong Bad doesn't even say the word email in all of his intros, so there goes that idea. And wait, if I said his keyboards are never plugged in, then following that same logic, then that would mean that none of the mics he would need to record his speech would be plugged in either, because 
we never see any. I mean, I'm not prepared to declare this theory dead because I'm stubborn, but this is definitely not helping. But regardless of whether I want to admit it or not, are we done? Do we have to concede that Strong Bad is typing with boxing gloves on despite it being just as unbelievable? Accept cartoon logic at face value? Pfft, who do you think you're talking to? Before we go today to all of you who are unsatisfied with this idea that I came up that is admittedly a little labored in some places, let me leave you with one more idea that is altogether more likely how Strong Bad is able to type with boxing gloves on cause it's kind of what's happening already. Earlier I mentioned that some movie magic must be used in the production of Strong Bad emails as they ignore acknowledge the production all the time, and the easiest way for Strong Bad, or really anyone, to appear to type with boxing gloves on would be done in the editing of the in-universe show. The best real-world explanation for this kind of thing would be to have the computer screen be a green screen and then adding the text in post. Since Strong Bad clearly wears his boxing gloves while he answers emails, it would still look like he's doing the impossible with reckless casualness. And since in early Speemails his head was moved to cover his mouth movements, it would also explain how the words on screen are able to replace the words that he says. And finally, on top of all that, it would also explain how Strong Bad's able to do this, despite his keyboards being unplugged. So... That's what I got. <laughs> Two potential answers for one of the internet's oldest mysteries. One is a lot more compact than the other, but whatever the answer is, I still had a lot of fun looking back at HomestarRunner.com this week, and hopefully you did too. Or maybe I made you curious enough to want to go back and check out this relic of the internet. While some might think it's a product of its time, I still think it all holds up. And the creators have worked on a ton of other projects since, contributing to shows like Yo Gabba Gabba and various Disney shows like Wander Over Yonder and Gravity Falls. Remember Miramondo? Yeah, voiced by Strong Bad. That said, both Matt and Mike Chapman have returned to the site in the last few years, and while the release of new cartoons is still pretty slow, it looks like they're working on a site overhaul, producing videos like Skills of an Artist over on the Homestar YouTube channel, and they look to be in the midst of creating a Trogdor board game, so could we see a second age of Homestar Runner in the next few years? I really hope so. But anyway, since I'm the one who put these ideas on the table, I can't exactly rate them, but what do you think? How do you think Strong Bad types with boxing gloves on, if he does at all? Hopefully Strong Bad doesn't see this video and then decide to delete it, but if he does, we'll know we were onto something. Alternatively, if you were on the internet back then, what's your favorite early 2000s pre-YouTube cartoon or internet video? Let us know in the comments. Once again, I'm Jacob, and as always, Frederator. Uh